you could film that movie Dune here. <laughs> it's like we're on the surface of Arrakis right now. It's so bad that we're going to go hunting today, but we're spending the first half of the day just like mentally and physically preparing. Prepare, yeah. yeah. So instead, we figured we'd record now and then uh, get more footage this afternoon if you can even hear what's going on in the video because it's going to be like... Chad, mm. what do you think of these dogs? It is windy and very dusty. And it rained a little bit in the beginning, so there's like mud rain. That's new to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that sounds like mud. That sounds like it could be a metal band album. Raining mud or yeah, mud yeah, rain. So, <laughs> so um, we have brought a smaller amount of variety of dogs this time to run. What'd you bring this time, Chad? Got a pile of sidehounds. I think there's hell yeah, six. I don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six, six sidehounds, two draughts, and a yag terrier. Yeah. You brought the classics. You yep. brought you brought back Daryl, yep. my boy. You brought back Haggis, my yep. stepson. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're 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 gonna go raccoon hunting. We went last night, guys. Uh, it was good. We we have a shout out to Colt. You'll be hearing from him a little later. Um, really nice guy. I've hunted with him. If everyone remembers the um, episode I did with Lauren Vranny with hunting in the canals with her ra- uh, coon hounds, uh, I decided to bring Chad back to that to that great place. Uh, Colt was 14, I believe, when we hunted there last time. Now he's 17 and has a good set of coon hounds himself. So the coons are then scarce, <laughs> <laughs> and so we're working to uh, go a little couple uh, miles north to see if we can find some more coons. Found a skunk. <laughs> found a skunk. Uh, uh, it worked out all right because uh, we actually the found terrier. two skunks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right, two skunks. Like. The, uh, you know, all of them have been broke off of skunks at some point, but that's kind of like a reoccurring thing you have to keep up with. But luckily, it, it went fairly easy. D, D didn't get a straight shot to the face, you know, but it's definitely on her face and collar. So I'm thinking she just, you know, checked out a den. And I think deeper down the hole, it must have sprayed because it she she's been wafted with with the spray we were chilling in the house last night eating dinner and chad goes do you guys smell skunk and we're like nah he's like dang it's just in my nose <laughs> <laughs> well, that's better at least it wasn't on like my hands or something. You, know, like, you wouldn't have come in my house if you smell like skunk yeah, son you'd have been out there there's room in the kennels <laughs> you'd be sleeping with pronto the king of the prairie there you go. actually no you'd be sleeping with like calypso he gets his own kennel you're not allowed in there <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah so um yeah we went up there uh we went to the vla it's one of my favorite places to run a rabbit in new mexico it's uh it's incredible it's huge amounts of blm about twenty thousand acres and uh we walked a long way mm. how long did it take us we found we walked about six hours about yeah between all the dogs chad brought his his draughts this time to find the hairs for us and uh yeah they do and they did mm. griff found the first one you got a pretty unlucky break there. Yeah, I just, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, the way with just for, to put it out there, you know, the way we hunt, you know, specifically when I have the draughts, if uh, they'll be out circling the area, and if they get the rabbit up, they're gonna they're gonna scream, they're gonna bark, they're gonna call, you know, call in the cavalry, so to speak, and bring all the sighthounds there, and then. But everybody hunts different, you know. Like I said, I've I've hunted this up in, in the exact opposite, you know. Um, <clears throat> Where, you know, so if the dog calls it and then the dogs, you know, the sighthounds are in between you and the scent hound that's calling everybody the game. And then you call it or a person calls it in the group. The dogs will turn around and run back when they should be turning around and running the other way after mm. the dogs. And that's that's kind of what happened there. They got, you know, instead of going to the barking dog, they went to the hollering human. Chad's in the opposite uh, direction. He's being nice right now. What he's trying to say is me and Justin sound like a bunch of wild Indians when the rabbit got up. <laughs> And that's what we do when we see a rabbit. And he may have said something earlier in the day, but it's bad habit. But I am also going to tell you, been running a while, there was no way in hell your pack was going to be able to get on that rabbit. It's jumped like 100 yards to the left anyway. So like half of them would have just been like out of that race entirely. If Daryl would have jumped it, 
yes, mm-hmm. you would have had a race. Mm-hmm. And I would have felt really bad for ruining your rabbit. Right. But when Balin <laughs> jumped it, I was like, nah, she's not going to even turn it. So right. <laughs> it just turned into a runaway. His heavy cavalry, Daryl, didn't even really see the rabbit. He was too far away. And uh, Daryl, he's the key for, for Chad's pack early game to, to get the rabbit all flustered and zapped, beat up its energy so that his Salukis can gobble it up. Um, which is a time time proven strategy. Um, so that rabbit was uh, it was hard as a rock. Not as hard as the one we jumped yesterday. Yeah, the one you jumped, the second one you jumped yesterday was like that rabbit came up telling everyone how badass he was, which doesn't happen very often. Literally. Yeah. yeah the the what did you call it? It's flashing. flashing. Yep. I haven't heard that before. I never really gave it a term, but I uh, that stuff works on on falconry though. You know, when you have a, a younger bird or even some older birds, like uh, uh, my older male goshawk, who, you know, probably had like 60 jackrabbits to his name at that point. If he sees them do that flashing where they do like, it's like the Pepe Le Pew pounce. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thing, right? Yeah. And they'll they'll be in hot pursuit. And when they start doing that, like, look how healthy I am. And they just kind of peter out and land on the ground. Dogs don't respond really to that at all. <laughs> yeah, they're just like run jackrabbit yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah so like what happens i'll describe it the, the hair came up and uh, it took off running and it had a pretty substantial lead on chad's dogs when it was running away and what they do is they take like yeah like chad said they take like two or three steps and they hop up in the air while they're still running forward and they just do that ta-ta-ta-ta and they just jump up in the air and he, they jump side to side. So they show the sides of their body when they're jumping up, which is intentionally slowing them down. But he's telling the predators, hey, don't even mess with me, son. I'm a superior life form. I know Kung Fu. Yeah, exactly. I always get the pick, like the idea of like the like a little nerdy kit that was like, you don't want to fight with me. And he does a little Kung Fu moves like I know karate or something like that. But it works in the wildlife community. <laughs> Not so much growing up in high school uh but middle he, school or what it, have you. it also works on the prairie son because that dog dusted or that rabbit dusted your dogs like he did that he did he whipped he whipped my dog's butts i man. told I chad i said he would have dusted my dogs too don't worry that was a <laughs> that rabbit had chad's speed now and and he was pretty zapped daryl was tired by that point mm-hmm. um but you could just see that hair just fading into the distance and i'd looked at justin heist my good friend and uh fellow rabbit badass and I, I looked behind him and he was just like shrugged at me he's like yep that one was gonna get away guaranteed and i was like yep that was a badass <laughs> like there are some that are just unstoppable um but we were at the vla everyone uh, me and shout out to paul domsky uh we were out there with him he's a good friend of mine as well and he's been on the show uh check him out you guys uh we ran a combined pack of my two Salukis and his three Salukis. And, uh, man, yeah, we, we caught a rabbit. It was good. It wasn't yep. the hardest rabbit on earth, but it definitely wasn't as soft as a sock either. Uh, Comet and Strider put a really good moves on him in the beginning. And then, uh, they went through a fence. Comet doesn't fence, which is totally fine with me. And then, uh, Strider, nothing would stop him. That mm-hmm. thing could be on the other side of 10 rolls of razor wire. He's going through and Ch- uh, Paul's dogs went through and they caught him. So, uh, it was awesome. Stay tuned, you guys. Uh, HXP TV. Uh, it's by the time you're listening to this, it's been up on HXP TV. So our patrons, excuse me, patrons, check it out. It's there. So it was a good day. A lot of walking. I think Justin now has abs after that day. <laughs> <laughs> abs and a sunburn. I said. Yo, oh my god. I thought. Yeah, that sunburn was horrible. I have to wear the goggles for the drone and. Uh, I am so sunburned. It was terrible. You, you're you tan now. You look pretty now. Well, the back of the <laughs> neck is still a little, you know, that's that's mm-hmm. a little red. I still feel that with my hood rubbing on it, you know? Yeah, that's, uh, Chad is now officially a redneck. Yeah, yeah, temporarily. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you brought, uh, you brought some new guns out here to the field. So, um, we're excited to see them mature. They still got a lot of, of work to do in the shape department. Oh, definitely. Definitely. They, I mean, that. <laughs> I mean, I've gone like every third or fourth day and they still only had like six hunts since I got them. So yeah. It's just, you know. That's 100% we'll a judgment-free zone. That was just a, yeah. you just got them. I mean, uh-huh. you got to you gotta get them in shape. They come from a place that's not as rabbit rich as, as we are here, as spoiled. And so, uh, not that I'm very rabbit rich. We walk six hours for two rabbits, but. <laughs> <laughs> spoiled rotten. Yeah, yeah. So, um yeah, we're excited, you guys. I still need troopers coming up. That's what I'm waiting for. Uh, 
pronto cheeto can't wait for that we'll that's see the plan right yeah that's the plan you'll be getting some too if you if you want one. Oh yeah i'd like one so and we'd have a lot of stuff to talk about coon hunting you guys but the weather has just been uh totally pile driving us so we're gonna work on getting some of that too but i did want to bring up one topic to chad we've been talking about this quite a bit and i wanted to segue into that with talking about my own breedings and chad's giving me a bunch of good advice i wanted him to tell it back out to the people i got a male who's very inexperienced he's never bred a female and he's also very soft he's a hard breeder so chad give us some tips on and we'll talk about this together but some tips on what to do with a, a first time male for breeding so one of the what i one of the things i find that can shut down a a, a a male that's just not obsessed with you know reproduction <laughs> <coughs> would be um a lot of us always err on the side of trying to make breedings too early uh, like i almost every time we get a uh, i get a failed breeding it's cuz uh, whoever i'm working with is, tries to put them together too soon rather than too late and um uh, lightly motivated males can attempt to breed and then we all know how the females are when they're not ready they'll shut them down they may bite them they may just growl they may do whatever but if that happens again and again and again they may totally shut down so uh, one of the tricks i do is um i'll use another male a different male you know and you have to observe this you can't just throw them out in the yard and say i'll be back later to check it out but put the male out there with the female and wait till she starts to one flag two turn her tail and three you know when he actually tries to mount observe be there to pull him off but like if she actually stands for him now there's still the last little bit you know like some females will stand but then you know when the when you try and put the rubber to the road they still aren't ready and they'll nip at him but at least at that point you've gotten away you've You've weeded out a lot of the the other steps, you know, and then and then once you you have that sorted out, then you could start introducing your you know your your new softer male to the female, and it may take him a little while to a day to work up the courage to give it a first try anyway. So like not having your male get beat up and broke down. Like I got a dog named Missy that when she's ready, oh my gosh, it's she'll wrap the male up. Literally, I'm not even kidding. She'll wrap the male up and then get off and turn around and stick her hind end up in the male dog's face. And if he doesn't do anything, she'll like, like this! And she'll run <laughs> and grab him and wrap him up and she'll even growl at him, you know? <laughs> um, but if she's not ready, she'll she'll hurt a male, you know? So um, I had to learn that with her forever ago, it seems like, you know, like to keep her away. You know, throw in, we'd use my Malinois. Because he would get straight bit in the face and not care. He wouldn't even turn his face away. He'd be like, yeah, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I like it rough, baby. I like it. I like it rough. <laughs> yeah. Um, so so that's that's key. Um, I forgot. I know like we had just briefly mentioned it before, you know. Um, let's see. That That's one of the big things you can do with the softer male. Um, and now, if you go into AIing, then that's a whole nother. That's kind of where we were going to. Okay. And you were giving me a bunch of tips about uh, home AI. If you can, home AI. Yeah, it's really not that hard. I mean, like it's. I've walked a bunch of like it's not, and it's, I'm not just saying, oh, it's not that hard. I've done it a thousand times. No, I'm like, but I've talked to I think like three people now just over the phone, and they've been successful. Yeah, like not just they accomplished the tax and put the semen where it needed to be but actually had successful breedings off of a just, you know, short phone conversation. So it's it's really not that hard as long as you're not, you know, entirely carefree, you know, and negligent. Um, it's just as simple as, like, have the female there, you know. Um, let him get going. You know, there's going to be... And that's the other thing. A lot of people, like, try and get involved too much. That's the other thing. Like, the, the male's probably going to do some licking. He may go lick urine on the ground and yep. you're like no stop that you no know, like, let him do that yeah, you're yeah. breaking him down he's yeah he's trying to work himself up man let him ex ex express his instincts right now that's what we need <laughs> yeah so kind of try and stay out of the way as much as possible i try not to look right at him I, I don't think they get stage fright in that and they're like oh you can't watch me but if they haven't done it before they don't really know if it's allowed 
you know i i I think and i think we spend a lot of time suppressing this is a problem in racehorses but you spend time suppressing their sexuality like if they're humping in the field you're like cut it out yeah you know what i mean even yeah yeah let them stomp at the ground or zap them so that happens to horses and so dogs i'm sure i get mad at my males if they're trying to do be stupid when we're hunting which you know so pronto is very gentle very soft so um, he was getting whooped down by a mean bitch for, for the beginning part. So I'm nervous that he's now going to be scared to attempt it on a different female, but he, he kept trying. So I feel like he'll keep trying, but mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, then that's the other thing. If it's not going to happen, don't keep trying. Yeah. You know, it, shut it down for that day. It's not like you're, yeah. you know, it, 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 when they're ready, they're ready. You yeah. know, it's very few females <clears throat> will just, or won't let it happen. It does happen. It does happen where some females just don't allow breeding at all. You know, but most will when they're ready, you know, and it's just a a striking difference, you know. So, put them together. Um, If they, you know, if uh, the male attempts to tie and she shuts them down, you know, then shut it down. Don't let them get, don't let them get denied 10, 12 times or, because she's going to get more and more aggressive. Yeah. You know, and possibly bite harder or get up in his face or something like that. Um uh, and this is just something that is loosely related, but something I, I've seen happen. Um, so I, I feel <laughs> obligated to bring it up. You know what app I use on my phone more than any other app besides the podcast app to listen to this here podcast? I use Onyx. Onyx Maps is the most comprehensive mapping system for hunters on the market today. I use it all the time. When I was in New Mexico, I was looking at 40,000 acres of ranch that I needed to learn. I flip open Onyx and just start studying, studying the map. When I'm riding trails, I put the tracking app on. It helps me get around in strange country. I could mark water sources, food sources, bear sign, just all kinds of options within Onyx. You need to check out Onyx Maps by going to houndsmanxp.com. Click on the link on our sponsor page. You'll go right to Onyx Maps, and when you check out, enter the code HXP20, and you will get 20% off of your order. Know where you stand with Onyx. When you do this, a lot of times I like to bring the female to the male's area. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, he feels, you know, so if, if these are kennel dogs or, you know, like, let's say you have two buddies on a street, bring the female to the male's yard. Don't bring the male to the females. Mm-hmm. Right? You know the, he'll be more confident in his own yard, which will help. And and again, that's not to say that you need all of this. There's a lot of males that are just make it happen. But sometimes males will have issues forever, or even or just for the first breeding. You know, after they generally after you get one successful tie, it's all downhill from there. Yeah, yeah. But again, for working through your first tie, you can bring the female to the male's yard or the female to the male's kennel. And if you do a kennel. Like for example, I had for the longest time this ten by ten that was like, like a quarantine area. If I ever had a dog at Coxie or Giardia or something like that, I'd, I'd bring them over there on cement so I could observe the stool until I got them wormed out, cleaned out, and everything, and uh, then return them. But and that doubled as long as nobody was in there sick recently. That doubled as like a, a mating area. Mm-hmm. But I keep a doghouse in there just again in case one ever got sick or hurt or something. I could I could put them in there, but don't allow the dogs to tie and i think this was just like a temporary housing so it was like a barrel with a bunch of straw in it Mm. right okay so i know i've known this to happen where uh, a male and a female tied and you know if you've seen it before they they're going to pull against each other gently you know Uh, but sometimes you'll have one of the dogs that just pulls a little bit more and i've had a female pull a male over to the barrel and enter the barrel Oh dang! And males on the outside, the females on the inside, uh, and it is a train wreck. It ouch! Is not it is not pretty. It's real bad for both parties, you know. But the female then it, it's it, short of reaching your hands in, grabbing the back legs, and like threading them through to get the female out. The worst thing could be if they actually pull the male inside. Yeah, you know. Uh, but this one, uh, the the male actually had serious injuries due to it. You know, where the female. <laughs> stressed and started to panic yeah now she's wild cat space yep and turned around and not only was she tugging him pretty pretty aggressively Ouch. but she actually bit him bad and because she was inside she had like access to him but he couldn't get back to her and there's a yeah it, it can go wrong so if you have a 
uh, uh, kennel run that you do a breeding in, or if you bring the female over to the male, just tip the doghouse up. Yep. Put something in front of it, turn it to the side, you know, like close close that doghouse off. You know, it, it might not happen. It probably won't. I, if I had to bet, nine times out of ten, you'd, ne- you'd never yep. have this problem. But you don't want those problems either. No. You know? So anyway, that, that's just the- <clears throat> I told myself I'd wait at least six years before I bred my own litter because I wanted to learn a lot. Yeah. And I figured I'd make more mistakes if I tried to breed too soon, and I would have. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad I didn't. I'm not that I... And know it all now. Heck no. We're still learning daily. And my opinions of what I like changes all the time. That's part of the fun of houndsmanship. Uh, absolutely. You just imagining those crosses and what could work better and like... Fun to think about. But it is. So, uh, I finally got a cross that I'm solid as a rock on. I have been for a long time. And uh, that didn't work out just because Nadia's not really a nice lady. She doesn't like Pronto. She's too hard for him. Mm-hmm. We tried two, no, three times and uh, through her entire heat cycle, let him flirt. And she's just not about him. Mm-hmm. She likes a mean male that'll just get in there and just show her who's boss. <laughs> and so uh, I've heard that the dew claws can be too sharp and they can upset a female. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you can cut the dew claws, I guess do that. You can cut them or vet wrap the paws. Do you something. think that would stop a male that's touchy though? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, definitely. Anything yeah. can, you know, yeah. a strong wind on a, on a wind. <laughs> and, yeah. You know, like the, there, there's no telling, but if, you know, he's trying aggressively and then she just gets upset, whatever the dude calls are there, that's just, you know, a rap or two of a vet rap and, you know, give it a shot. Problem it's easy solved. to take right back off, you know? Yeah. Um, you can't touch Pronto's feet. So cutting his dew claws is not going to happen. So I was thinking maybe I could wrap up his feet. Yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> Possibility. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Know? I, I think he won't care that much about the vet rap when there's a female in front of him, but I don't know. You never know. He's pretty dumb. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I'm really excited. I'm, I want to try that. Uh, obviously, nothing beats a natural tie, but I also... Absolutely. Tell me, tell me about collecting your own mail. Okay. Um, it changes everything to have the female present. Oh, yeah. You know, just clip her up with a... You know, like a tie-out leash or something like that. Like pass it through the chain link and then clip it up high. Um, rather than, um, you, you don't need to, you know, a lot of these sight hounds will panic. if they, Oh, yeah. You know, they go into the fight or flight fairly easy if you collar them or they feel like they're snared by any fashion. <clears throat> um, so, but what you can do to give them like, like a foot of leash is just like pass your tie out chain through a chain link and then go up or over or wherever and clip it on the other side and that way you can give them like a foot so they can they can turn around and they they're not going to panic thinking they're they're, they're trapped but they aren't going to be running like a six foot end and you want the the male to be able to sniff and get involved a little bit and uh, there's a bunch of different ways you could buy kits from like you know different animal pet supply. Uh, places but um i just use a a, a nitro glove you know um and i just used a mason jar the, the mason jar <laughs> yeah oh, hold on you yeah i did this i failed but i did it i succeeded in extracting semen but i did not get enough and i didn't get the proper kind and this okay. is what i really want to okay. get to so okay you use a nitro glove and when i heard you say that i was like that's a way better idea <laughs> yeah it, it, it works out great like if you get like uh like i think i bought a set from like one of the animal supplies t- stores and it was just a plastic ring with just like what looked like you know have you ever seen like the icing the cake icing sleeves yes. where you, you know fold it over and it tapers down to a point with a little head on it they make like little plastic ones like that that feels very similar to like a ziploc bag um and i i, I don't think that that is the best like surface personally you know like for it for it uh i really like a nitro glove like at this point in my life if there was something i'd buy it yeah I, yeah i choose these yeah yeah i think they're better um and uh <clears throat> well you just kind of put the nitro glove in your hand and just roll the opening of the glove over your finger and thumb you know so you got your hand as if you were holding a baseball bat or, or something to that effect and just have the nitro glove there allow the female to i mean the male to sniff and then once he's thoroughly engaged you just line it up in front of the dog's sheath and push and it's in there they don't you know like that doesn't have to he does the dog doesn't have to be out of his body to to begin this yeah. whole equation yeah. um and you just push and then generally at that point if the if the dog is very interested they'll take care of it themselves but you mainly want to push the the sheath back 
far enough until you can get a hold of <laughs> the anatomy. Yeah. Right? Um, quickly, there'll be a knot that will begin to form. Do they thrust really intensely? No. No, I've never had one thrust. Okay. At all. Uh, but I'm not saying they won't, but I've done it a lot of times. And okay. I've never had that happen. So once you put pressure with the glove, see, this is where I, yeah. So yeah, So you're just sliding the sheath back as if there was like, yeah. I don't know. You know how to explain it, but it's just, you know, his, his, his. Oh, it will. Yeah. yeah. His body's in there, you know, his penis is in there. Yeah. And you just slide the sheath back. Um, and then, <clears throat> then there's a knot that will immediately mm-hmm. start to grow. That's what you need to focus on. There's no thrusting action that you have to perform. Mm-hmm. There, it, it, none, of, none of that needs to happen. Okay. You know? All you do is push the sheath back and grab a hold. You're going to feel the knot almost immediately start to grow. And then your job is to grab that knot. The way it works. With the other hand. With no, just with one hand. Okay. So you've slid him into the nitro glove yep. and you've grabbed the knot. It's a one-handed operation. Gotcha. Um, and at this point, I generally come at the dog from the side. Yeah. You know, rather than from behind or in front or anything like that. I'm trying to give let everything going on in front of him, let him focus on that, and I'll be behind the dog and just slightly grab him from the side. So they, um, at that point, the knot's going to start growing. You grab the knot. Um, the the only thing you have to simulate. Like everybody's like, well, do I <laughs> do I really have to like get active in this? I'm like, no, <laughs> get, you don't. You know, try, like, and watching Chad try to find all these pseudonyms and stuff for these words is the funnest part of this yeah, podcast. Yeah, I imagine this is kind of funny. Uh, I, I I probably could have put a little thought into this ahead of time, but I, I, just here, use the scientific terms. Here we go. <laughs> okay, um, <clears throat> so you're just gonna grab that knot, all right? And then what you're simulating is that knot is supposed to enlarge inside the female. Yeah. You know? That's how they get stuck together. Exactly. That's yep. exactly how they get stuck together. So it's going to put a lot of pressure on the knot, and that's supposed to be from the inside of the female. So there's no jiggling. There's no moving of your hand at all. The only thing you have to do is grab that knot and squeeze. Now, it's going to, you know, if we... Now, to, you squeeze the bulb itself with equal pressure or behind it or behind around? Behind it. Okay. You know, so if you're going from end of member... <laughs> up the the you know the, the the anatomy to the knot and then you have the thickest part of the knot and then again now you're coming down the the far side of the knot getting closer to the dog's body that's where the pressure goes okay so you know you're going to interlock your index finger and thumb you know bring those together and and squeeze on that side that's where the most of your pressure needs to be is in between the dog and the knot and then the rest of the, your finger, so now your middle finger, your ring finger, and your pinky, and then the, the heel of your palm are going to be around the widest part of the dog's okay, knot. Okay, okay. And then you just maintain steady pressure. Yeah, now squeeze the shit out of it. Just You're going to squeeze harder than you think you should. Okay. I'll be honest. I wasn't prepared for that, you know? Um, uh, and, and you only learn that through trial and error. Yeah. Because it, it'll swell, it'll stay there for a second, and then it kind of peters off and goes away yeah you know so you're gonna you're gonna want to squeeze the pressure keeps the erection yes okay it, that's right yeah, yeah and then as soon as you get a hold of it and the knot continues to grow you can either just pull your hand down and over and let his him step over but okay. ideally you want both legs away from you so you're pulling the knot towards the tail beyond and the that's tail. okay to twist it down like oh, yeah. they do that when they mate yep, so yep. they do that it's uh, in my opinion, it is a critical part of dog breeding. It okay. needs to happen. They have to twist backwards. Yeah, well, it's <laughs> this, the darker side of animal breeding. <clears throat> they like it, Seth. Yeah, there's yeah, no yeah. No other way. Like, <laughs> they want to pull against yeah, it. Yeah. That's, so there's an amount of pulling that, you know. They naturally express. Yes. Yeah. You know, so, and you're immediately going to start to see fluid come out. At this point, that is not what you're after. That's where I messed up. Yeah, that's that's nothing. You know that's a that's a lubricant, uh, 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 and uh, is it like a basic fluid that like changes the pH of the vagina? It does a yeah, lot of things. Yeah. It does that. It provides. It allows. It adds some more fluid in there so the swimmers can swim. That's right. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 all kinds of stuff. But yeah. the the main point is that is not what we're after. That's where I messed you know? up. So let the dog step over and then start pulling away. Now don't go start dragging him. Uh, what I like to do is I like to be still mm-hmm. and let him pull me. You know, and then, and I just don't move. And that is, that's generally the correct amount of pressure. If he starts backing up towards you, you did too much. Okay. You know, but if he's constantly pulling you and you're walking with him. 
Too little. Uh, grab a hold of the kennel wall. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. You know, like he needs to pull as hard as he needs to pull. Um, and it will make your hand tired. You know, and again, you're not, you're not, you're not moving death your gripping. hand in yeah. any fashion. That Got is one hundred and ten percent non necessary. You are just grasping and holding firmly. And at that point, again, he's not going to be, be thrusting at all. Uh, but you will begin to feel a pulsing. Yep. You know, and that's what you want. It'll like uh, there's a rhythm to it, so it'll be like pulse, pulse, pulse. Pulse, mm-hmm. and you that may go on for five minutes. I was gonna say I've heard five to ten minutes for yeah, the, all of it, 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 a while. And I just it just hold on. You can switch hands, you know, like because your hand should get tired. If your hand's not tired, it, it, like not meaning you are required to to do it, but if you don't if you don't find your hand starting to get tired, then you're doing it wrong. Okay, you're not squeezing yeah. hard enough. You're not holding steady pressure. Yep. and don't squeeze, let go, squeeze, let go. That doesn't happen when they're breeding. It yeah. doesn't happen. <clears throat> so you just let the dog pull against you and then just hold on until you feel the pulses stop you know when they face away from you do they naturally step over or do you just pull and get the leg over on your own um i kind of let the dog help me out there yeah. some will begin to freak out you know if if you touch them or, yeah if yeah. you touch them so i'll do that and generally if you if you know because you have a hold of the dog and you push you know now you're pu- pulling down and you point down a lot of times they'll just step over all on their own gotcha you know and then you just you know make it parallel as if like if the dog's nose neck shoulder hips tail and point of tail are all in a straight line yeah you're continuing that straight line towards Got the tail Got and it. and just hang on s- sit there and yeah. then they pull away and you just like i said hold on until the pulses are done yep and at that point you just relax your hand a little bit he'll pull away and if you did your job right he put um, his penis into one of the fingers of the mm-hmm. nitro glove. Yep. And then as you pull back, the finger will be full of the fluid you're after. And it makes it really easy. What I generally like to do is I'll hold it up. I'll take a pair of scissors. A scissors that have a red piece of electric tape wrapped around the handle. <laughs> So they don't get confused with anything. Yeah, else. and I'm going to make full disclosure. The mason jar I used is in the trash long ago. <laughs> it's not one of the ones we've been drinking out of. <laughs> yeah, you don't, you don't, these are not multi-use tools. You know, they generally go in a bag or a box and they wait until the next time you use them. So yeah. I cut off the finger of uh, that nitro glove. Yep. And then you can get like a 3ml syringe generally and it makes it really easy because if it's in let's just say I, i've known other people that have tried and and got success obtaining you know semen from the dog with like a ziploc bag but then you have to try and get it and it's yeah all yeah over the it's place. not contained what's cool about the nitro glove is one it doesn't really stick to the nitro glove yep. too much yep. you know um and it's all it, basically like a flexible test tube it's contained yeah. yeah and then you just draw up as much as you possibly can with what um, I use a 3ml syringe. Okay, that's you, you know? said that. Yep. Um, now, if you get one of the syringes that have like the lure lock, the little screw on lure lock ends, yep. you can lose a little bit. You know, like this is <laughs> definitely not a comfortable situation, you know, like for everybody, you know, like <laughs> and, unless you're just an interesting fella, you know, like, <laughs> I guess that would be the fly away. There's really nowhere none of us want to be. I'll be honest. Yeah, you know, this is this is a, a sacrifice we have to make for good dogs. Sometimes. Yeah, I wasn't too psyched to uh, get to know Pronto that way. You yeah, know what I mean? It, yeah. It's, <laughs> I, I mean, it's just a- because I'm comfortable doing it. Still, is, <laughs> it's, it's not fun. It's something I enjoy. You doing. know, as a biologist, you do pretty crazy things to animals all the mm-hmm. time, and I do just view it as just like another day on the job where I'm getting peed on or mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's like, still you know, like still checking a heifer or something yeah. like that. You know, whatever. You know, but it's just like. It's just not the most ideal task. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, you want to get all of it. So like the little 3ml syringes, 3cc syringes with the lure lock on the outside, the, you know, some of the semen can get stuck in that mm. little reservoir mm. at the mm. end. And I just don't, I'd rather not. Um, so you, you know, I, but lure lock syringes are awesome. That's what I use for all the other vet care I need. I like, I don't have, I don't like to worry about the needle coming off mm-hmm. if I'm trying to inject ivermectin that's like molasses or something like that. So the lure locks are nice, but for this, it's ideal if you have a three ml syringe with just the tapered head, you know, the little, the little point at the end of the syringe and you can draw that up. Um, and, uh, oh gosh. And there's a tube made just for this. Generally they're like 
three to four. I think I've even seen them like five inches long. And the, the name of this tube is... I'm drawing a blank right now. Some I should order. Some you should have on hand. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, I'll get some today. Yeah. Um, and I have a I have a personal measurement that I could you know that I could explain by looking at the hind end of the female about how far in you want to put this stuff. Now a lot of people are like, oh, I think I'm supposed to freeze it, right? No, ideally, no. Yeah. You have your female right there. Let yeah. the male go. He's gonna. He's he's gonna take care of matters. He's not gonna be up in your way, you know. You got like a while before he's gonna start pestering the female again, trying to get in your way. He's probably gonna go sit in the corner and lick himself. Yep. <clears throat> yep. That gives you time to work with the the female that you have leashed up. Yep. Um, put one of the little tubes on the end. <clears throat> um, it's important that you do not introduce air to the female. Oh, and by the way, I am not a vet. This is just this uh, is what has worked for you. To everybody, this is what's worked for me in the past. Like, disclaimer time. If you do not feel comfortable with this, don't do it. Talk to the vet. Yeah. You know? Because this is, like, up until now, you really can't mess anything up. <laughs> you just get to know your stud dog a little better than you want to. <laughs> but you can't hurt anything. But now when you get to applying the semen to the yeah. female, you can hurt the female. Yeah. You know, you do not want to introduce air. You know? So once you get the tube on, you know, if you're not familiar drawing medicine up from a vial... Yeah, making sure you get all the air out of the syringe and the needle, then maybe this isn't for you. you know? And you're not, so you're not just wait. So you're putting a needle on the end of this one? No, it's no, a it's, pipette. Yeah, pipette tip. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. And that's the word I was literally yeah. struggling. It's a little bit bigger than like a swivel stick, like yeah. a stir stick for coffee. Gotcha. And they're made 100 percent to attach the end of the syringe. Because this is going through the cervix, or no? Not through. Okay, not through. good, good. So no, then, no, we're doing it simple. Yes, we're not good, going good. In there, any of that, if it. it I do not. I was gonna I say. Not, I highly recommend never doing that. Yeah, I would never want to. You don't do even that. want to put pressure on the cervix. Yeah. You know, you want to get right up to it and stop. And stop right there. Yep. And if you're gonna mess up, mess up a little distance away. Yeah. You do not want to uh, like start poking and prodding in there. <clears throat> and the pipettes are not glass. They may observe. They may appear to be glass. Like if I just have one sitting on the counter here in front of you, you might think it's glass, but it's the same clear like plastic material as like a syringe mm. it's just smaller with a little attachment to fit on the syringe got it <clears throat> and it's it is like uh, like almost it almost feels like a rubberized plastic you know and that helps prevent any scratching yep. that may go on inside the female all right so you've got the semen it's in the syringe you have it all the way up to the end so that there's no air in the syringe you attach your pipette you're again going to Squirt the you know the semen all the way up to the end of the pipette now. Okay. Um, and ideally, you know, your dog gave you enough to 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 fill the pipette. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, you you're gonna want to go into the dog's vagina at like a gentle upward angle until it's inside the female, and then you're gonna level off. And go towards, like, again, nose, collar, shoulders, back, if they were all in a straight line. Mm -hmm. So, you're going to enter going towards the top of the dog's spine for roughly, like, a half inch. And then point it parallel with the tail towards the nose of the dog. And then it, it all depends on the size of the dog. Yep. I'm not even going to give a number. Yep. Because you're going to just, if you if you hit a wall, you're wrong. Yep. You know? Um and uh and then at the same time a lot of people are like well, <laughs> i'm gonna all right now i got it the distance it needs to be the rule of thumb that i go off of is there's a measurement i take off of like the where i believe the dog's femur is for the distance from the center of the femur to the dog's vagina that distance and that's generally about how deep i go that said if you have skinny terrier with a skinny terrier at the hind end that may be too far if you have a robust mastiff or a bulldog that may be further you know so <clears throat> that's just it's a rule of thumb yeah it's, it's a rule of thumb um and again i'm not professionally educated in this but i've, I've ai'd hundreds of dogs successfully in that that these are these are steps i've done <clears throat> now, are you using every, any are you using any lubrication on the syringe nope doesn't need it they don't need it got it they don't need it she's good ready to go, to go. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah um and uh, and I don't even put lubrication on the uh, nitrile glove. Yeah, he's that's what he does. He, he's good to go to. Yep. You know, if, I I kind of think if you're getting into that, 
that, that neither dog is ready in the first place. Agreed. And if you introduce that uh, uh, any kind of lubrication to the vagina, then the, the dog semen can't swim as well. I like to just leave it as natural as I can. Absolutely. You know? um, and uh, uh, this is where a lot of people think you're supposed to hammer down on that syringe and fire the semen up and it don't do that you, you know mostly just come out you, well it might it, it, you, you don't need to do that you know just put it in the right spot you know put you know squeeze out all the fluid you can gentle just, steady pressure you, you're gonna have some left in the pipette it's gonna happen you don't pull it out remove the syringe head add water you know you're not doing any of this you get as much as you can in out of the, the sample that you obtained and that's it. So uh, depress the syringe all the way and you're done. You know, whatever you didn't get in, it's just, it's wasted. That's just the way it is. Um, at that point, I generally, um, as I pull out the pipette, I will pinch um, closed the female's vagina and just give it like a minute. Okay. Um, it's going to not solidify, but it's going to sticky up a little bit in there, you know? Um, in, over the course of a minute or two. And I just sit there with the dog and hold on to it, pet the dog, tell her she's okay. You know, everything's fine. She's going to be freaking out a little bit, wondering what the hell's going on, <laughs> yeah. you know. But uh, um, you just, easy girl, easy girl, you know, like hold on, pet the dog. She should, her head should already be controlled with the leash. Yeah. I would not do this, you know, without that dog still clipped in, You like with about a, le uh, a foot of leash. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at that point, that way she can't really turn around too much. So you have her pinched. And with your other hand, you can pet her sides or just pet her head to keep her calm. After the end of two minutes, let it go. Fluid will probably come out. That's fine. It don't matter at that yep. point. Yep. And just, you know, I, I'll hold on and I'll unclip the, the leash so that she can clean and lick and everything like that. And I just let the dog go. And there you go. Now, do you need to repeat this process? I do. Um, generally speaking, if you have a female that will stand and you have a weak male breeder... I will obtain semen and put it on the female every day that the female will stand. One time a day. You know? Um, uh, just I, This happened to come to mind. Another just tip for breeding. A lot of people like to, well, all right, I think she's on the time. Uh, if you're traveling and going, you know, a long distance and the stud will provide multiple ties and you only have one day or yeah. even worse, a few hours, get, get what you can. You know, it's better over time, days, though. You know? But if you have both male and female, I, I like to do it one time a day, every day, you know, until yep. the female is unwilling to stand anymore. How many times do you hound doggers catch yourself thinking about an awesome hunt you had or retelling this great story with family and friends around the dinner table and all you have to remember that moment is some terrible cell phone picture or worse, no picture at all? Well... Houndsman XP has partnered with Rough Cut Company to help solve your problem and make beautiful pieces of art to remember for all time your experiences in the field. Rough Cut Company is an American-owned and American-made business in Wisconsin that specializes in custom, unique photo engravings on hardwood that are framed to any picture you want. They also do customizable antler dog chews and even beautiful, unique, antler rings from their own red deer in Wisconsin. Rough Cut Company can do pretty much anything you ask. Their customer service is second to none. Give them a look at roughcutcompany.com and when you check out, make sure you check out with HXP 10% off to get a discount on your final purchase. Check them out you guys and support people that support houndsmen and help keep us in the field and remembering those times forever and that's something i want to make clear to you guys we're not advocating like you know there, there's you know everybody knows what can what can be done with human interference and in animal mating but this is specifically what we're saying this process is good for is a shy male to a female that is receptive and wants to mate Yep. You know what I mean? So like my, that's the problem with Pronto is that Nadia would stand for him, but she was kind of growly when he'd climb on her and that just scared him and he just ran away. Mm -hmm. He never even got bit by her. He just got scared when she growled or made noise and he just ran off or like not ran off, but dismounted. Yeah. Sometimes we train so hard for dog aggression, you know, like you better not fight. Oh, I'm going to make yeah. you regret it. And then they get to the situation where there's 
growling yeah. and nipping sometimes and sometimes the male's just like nope i'm not getting in trouble you know yeah. it could be that it could be nurture or nature you yeah know, there's a lot of things that could cause it so happens. we're just making sure clear that you know if the female is not wanting to mate i, I mean i'm not gonna i'm not gonna she doesn't want to mate i'm there's something going on i'm just gonna let nature do its thing but you know if she wants to mate but then she's acting kind of weird or your male's inexperienced or shy this is what we're recommending and this is what i may have to do cheeto is a total sweetheart so i'm really hoping that she's just like hey handsome man yeah. <laughs> you know and that's what I, that's what i would really like them to just do it on their own thank mm-hmm. you <laughs> but uh yeah great tips man and, and that's where i messed up everybody i just didn't do it long enough um i i stopped after about 45 seconds to a minute after mm-hmm. i saw fluid and that's not that's just the beginning you, I, don't, I don't you might not have got a single swimmer in exactly yeah. and i don't think it, did. it was white uh-huh. so i was like good to go yeah no you know what I mean? And that was being Justin's first time doing that. I called you and I was like, no puppies resulted. Everyone, duh. And uh, I called Chad and I was asking about it and Chad's like, nope. <laughs> Here's yeah. what you did wrong. And so he just broke it down to you guys exactly how he broke it down to me. So uh, that was really good to, it's sad. I was really hoping for puppies from that cross, but we're going to try again. So I can't, I can't wait to do it. So thanks, man. I appreciate that. Um, the, the You bet. The only other tip I could give is... Uh, the female is generally good to go. There's nothing you really have to do about it. Sometimes if you're going to breed the male to multiple females or you you know, you know played everything right and your female started standing early and, you know, like, and you're like, I know this breeding isn't ready, but I'm not going to miss it. And you're like, all right, dude, I hope you're ready. <laughs> we, we, I think we got 10 days here or something like that. I give, I will put extra fats and protein in the uh-huh. male's diet, you know? Um uh, I don't personally, I don't think carbs do that much in that kind of situation, but proteins and fats, uh, I, I just see more output when I'm supplementing that. Good to know. know. Um, so maybe some um, uh, calorie supplement, you know, like, like no dine, affiliation, like dine or Fortical, yep. um, uh, or uh, some meat, mm-hmm. you know, some mm-hmm. good protein, some quality, highly digestible meat with fat, leave the fat on there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I think it, I think I get more output at least more fluid more volume you know, it's been yeah. a long time since i've looked at it under a microscope but i'm not really seeing i i would be lying if i told you there's an increase in swimmers but yeah he has more fluid so on game day by so. volume <laughs> on yeah. game day yeah so i'm i would like to uh pronto is six and a half so he's still well i think he's still well within his reproduction prime i oh, mean 100%. yeah yeah 100%. and you know so i'm, I'm really excited to uh, give that a shot I'd, I'd like to get him collected as well how do you do you have your best males collected um no sad to say oh uh, dang there was a time i did but no i gotta get there's a few males that i need to get i need to get collected and stored um that's that's great obviously if you have some stored don't use it if you could obtain fresh samples it's still always better it's it's still yeah of course better. and that's no, what i'm gonna better. definitely try so, for. but there's a tragedy strikes you know so if you have that's your what i'm preparing for swimmers on ice you're good to go i need pronto and comet in the bank there you go you never know when i'm gonna need to go back to those genetics especially what's cool is i mean heck there's there's some people that sell straws from dogs that have been dead forever yeah you know gable dodge yeah yeah oh Oh, yeah he's like one of the most overbred greyhounds ever he's a little bit everywhere i think my my horse has a little bit of gable (laughs) if you go back to (laughs) heavy heavy gable dodge on the top side you know yeah so uh, you'd be amazed how many people ask me if pronto is collected so Australia, heads up. <laughs> there you go. Pay the shipping and you can get a piece of pronto. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, all right. Well, we have two, uh, one last thing before I'm going to let you go, Chad. What's up? Uh, I'm starting a new series on the Patreon page called Best Dog of All Time. Okay. And where I interview everyone in five to ten minutes, tell me the best dog you've ever had and why. Bea. Why? What was Bea? Bea was a Yag Terrier. Okay. 15 pound, 15 inch at the shoulder. I actually got to see Bea. Terrier. I got to see her. That was Bea. I, uh, everybody likes their own thing, 100%. My flavor, what really gets me going is variety. Mm-hmm. I like to go do multiple things with my dogs. I like, you know, I, I, and nothing against, you know, anybody that would take a terrier and just do only hog hunting or only earthwork. Yeah, we're talking your favorite thing. Whatever, you know, like I get it. So my favorite thing is doing a different thing every day of the week. You know, but being in the woods, you know, like 100% in the woods, hunting as much as I can, but each day. And then she hammered that, man. I dug badgers with that dog. I dug raccoons with that dog. Um, she retrieved uh, game birds. 
Uh, she was a falconry dog. She was a hog hunting dog. She blood trailed. She slept in my bed. You know, which is like the she slept in your couch. bed. Yeah, she slept in my bed. Yeah, see, I saw how you were eyeing Pronto for sleeping yeah. on his own couch, <laughs> no. and here he admits it. Everybody, I won't, I won't talk. well, I, that's the only one. You know, there's, there's yeah, Pronto's not in my bed. He's yeah. not in my couch. He's on my couch, yeah. not on my bed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, he's big too, though. Yeah, it's, true, true, true. <laughs> the dog has legs like a giraffe. You know? <laughs> um, but yeah, she did. She did. Have, she was a like an amazing falconry dog. Um, her obedience was fantastic i i know i'm missing stuff like i could go on forever um what's but, your favorite story of hunting with Baya? oh gosh let me see your um, favorite Baya moment probably the day we got like three trophy hogs in a place that um i love cur dogs i absolutely love them i love black mouth curs you know they're they're one of my favorite hog dogs uh, but they're one of you know, them and Catahoulas and stuff are definitely the, 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 the go to titans of the hog hunting, hog bay dog community. Um, and uh, you always get a bunch of hate having like the one off breed, like a Yag Terrier you're hunting with. And uh, a guy went out to a, an area um, that used to be really hard on, on my terriers. And it was. It was playful, it was respectful, but it was relentless, you know? And so the, the, I always wanted to feed it back to him, you know? And uh, a good buddy of mine. And uh, he went out and hunted the night before, you know? And then we went out the very next day, and they could have moved in. I'm not going to lie. They could have moved in in between hunts, you know? But he went out there and hunted his butt off and couldn't find anything. And I went out there with two terriers and two catch dogs and caught three 250 pound that's that picture with your yeah. with your wife stacked up yeah, oh like, yeah you know? dude and we had an audience you know that's the other thing there's like i don't know like 12 people with us you know like six of them had never been before another six were just you know uh, veteran hog hunters that just couldn't you know we're just going yeah you know? and uh yeah and then they you know bay and came and went out and bait up you know it just got hog after hog. So we'd catch one and i'd rip bay off and kind of throw her in the bushes and she'd take off after the next one and we were tying that one when we heard her bay out the next one and came and broke off that and went out there and bayed and off the catch dogs go and we caught that one and like it was just as fast pace as you could possibly get and it was like in and i think it was like an hour and a half we caught three 250 class hogs you know plus or minus like 30 pounds or something like that you know those pigs were huge uh, but yeah they, they were really teeth nice. were awesome <laughs> yeah and it was just it was fantastic, you know, just be like, well, you know, like, <laughs> these little dogs did it. I don't know what the problem was, you know, uh, but yeah, that was, that was probably our best day. And at that point, Bea was, was, was a fantastic dog, but like hadn't totally broken me down yet to where like, I didn't want to, you know, I, I, I started finding new jobs for her at that point. Mm. She, she so you got her out. with the intention of hogs. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. And yeah. she did. Like, and I, I'm not going to say like she... Like the first five years of her life, she was a kennel, you know, like hog hunting dog that like just weaseled her way in, like earned her stripes, <laughs> came inside and then, and then started doing just varmints. You know, she did varmints before, but then she kind of backed up. Was she tough? Varmints. Huh? Was she tough? She was, but she wasn't like dead game tough. She like the, the rule I have for my terriers is I want them to hold the game. You know, and now we're going to back off of hogs for a second, and let's just say it's a, a raccoon, for example, or, or, or a varmint, a, a fox, baby. I, like, she may not kill it. I don't need that. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I, that's what I'm there for. Yeah. You know, um, but I really hate in and out gritty. I hate dogs that jump on and will bite and then let go, and then the dog, the raccoon gets away or the fox gets away. Like, do one or the other. Stay back in bay and keep it there and don't press it to leave or grab it and hold it and if you grab it don't turn it loose yeah don't turn it loose i know a lot of people that say you know they want their dogs to never never grab until they can get the perfect hold and i, I could see that but like my goal is to not lose it i've caught i, I think the last fox that i caught um was with actually with the sighthound was, was involved in that but she caught it by holding onto its back you know, like right above the root of its tail, it just happened to go down a pipe and she held it that Got him. Way, you know? Yeah. She, she happened to get a mouth on him before he got away. And uh, that's how we caught it. So I don't care where they grab, but where you grab, you better hold it. And a lot of times when a dog regrips on something like a, mm -hmm. like, a, like a red fox or a gray fox or anything like that, it's, it's gone. Yep. You let go for 0.2 seconds and you'll never see it again. 
So if you grab it by the back and it bites you in the face, well, you you got to hold on, you know, like don't let go or or don't don't bite. You yeah. Know? So that's always been my standard. And Bea was kind of like a, a pretty good example of that because she wouldn't finish very much large game on her own. When I say large game, like a full grown raccoon or a fox or something like that, she generally wouldn't wouldn't do that. But she'd hold them great. She had a habit. I don't know how she did it. I don't know if she like stuck her paw in the raccoon's mouth first. <laughs> And it was like some sacrificial tissue or something, but she had a way of scruffing coons and fox right in between the ears. And she would just hold that that scruff there and she could hold them forever. Yeah. I got so many pictures of like Bay on the tailgate with the stuff she caught. And if you look, you always see this little bloody mark right in between the raccoon's ears or right in between huh. the fox's ears. And that's just, that was her bread and butter. She would bay and bay and bay and bay and bay. Awesome. And then you generally hear a squawk, which makes me think, I don't think she did it on purpose. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not lying, but I think she would just work her way in until the the animal bit something and then she would grab them by the back of the head and that's that's you could dig down to her and she'd have them you know that's awesome just her so she wasn't crazy tough you know and a lot of people i it kind of irritates me people will say like oh this dog's got brains he's not gonna get hurt like okay well the fox is gone i you can you can lose some of the brains, you know. Like, I, I, <laughs> I, there's a guy named Mike McLaughlin who runs Greyhounds. He's like, I want them dumb as hell. Yeah. He's like, I just they just need to run hard. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, and there's some people that would not like my Missy dog, ter- you know, my terrier Missy, who does not care about her face. That like everything is. I remember too, Missy. Too yeah. concerned, yeah. you know? So she she'll take some damage, but I don't lose. If she touches it, it'll be there. <laughs> it'll be there. Badgers, it'll be there. She's gonna hold it. You know, yep. like she's not gonna turn loose of it. And Missy's tough. She was twelve when I saw her, and she was tough. Yeah, she had that coon right where she needed to have it. <laughs> and that's what I like. Either be tough or be smart. But like, if you grab it, don't turn it loose. Yeah. And that's that's what I liked. And Bea was about the same way. She almost never got hurt though. She never got cut hog hunting unlike missy <laughs> yeah. um, the, the badgers would do a number but that's they're hard man yeah like anywhere like specifically her trick does not work on a badger you know like you can grab a raccoon right in between the ears on the on the back but like and you see the videos of people holding like a badger up in the air get a huge handful them, but that's with the legs off the ground yep do that with a badger where it can touch the ground and you you know you know you're gonna, you're gonna get some yeah, yeah there's, there's some holes right there i got a hole in my hand we were just talking about the other day that's not where that came from i was i was helping my drop dig out a hole and the badger got a hold of me but if you scruff a badger like all the videos show and you leave his four feet on the ground you you're gonna wish you hadn't <laughs> well um, i don't know how many hounds and xp fans are grabbing badgers out there but some are some are listen to chad you don't want to get bit by a badger how old did Bea live uh Bea lived i believe till she was 14 14 yeah, and she was fairly blind she did not have the lensation issue she was just old and uh mostly deaf and yeah that's when i saw her she was just a shadow of what Bayo yeah. once was and uh, she still made it around you know just fine um but uh it, it got to the point where uh we'd have to let her go outside at night you know we had a backyard that we'd let her go empty in and uh uh, we started off with a collar that would tone and that even though she was deaf she could still just barely hear the tone and then we tried putting a little flashlight on it you know some of them have a light mm-hmm. and, and then like even if she couldn't see her whole world would light up and that was a recall and eventually both of those stopped working and then we went to a, a collar that vibrated so she'd go out and just wander around yep. endlessly <laughs> you know and you just vibrate her and she would smell her way back nice you know? if you put like a five gallon bucket in front of the door, she'd walk right into it. Oh, she was, she was, she was as blind as a bat. But yeah, so yeah, that was bad. That's, nice. That was my favorite. You were the first one I asked, and there's many more to come. There so right? yeah, so thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, this yeah. episode, we were gonna have uh, we're gonna have our friend Colt come in here and talk, but I think we're gonna make that a Patreon tailgate talk because guys, uh, we're running up on an hour already. Okay. So uh, that's gonna be a public one though. I want everyone to go check us out on Patreon, you guys. We have tons of bonus material. If you're loving HXP TV. Uh, the race that we're going to be talking about in HXP TV from our hunt with me and Chad where my Salukis and, and Domsky Salukis catch a rabbit. Uh, all those videos go to the Patreon page first. So if you guys want to see them unedited, raw, there's a lot of hunting footage that uh, we won't put on YouTube just because of the licensing and all the YouTube's BS. Patreon doesn't matter. 
Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's some grittier stuff that can go on the Patreon page that will be headed there. So, but by the time you're listening to this, guys, the uh, the race from the VLA will be on there. Go check that out. And uh, that's going to be uh, the episode for HXP TV coming up soon. So, uh, thank you, you can, guys. You can find us if you just go to YouTube, okay, and type in HXP space TV. All right. The, we have the, the main Houndsman XP podcast page, okay, but... In addition to that, a separate page is just HXP space TV. And all that's on there is, you know, our amazing videos. <laughs> HXP out. TV, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, that's it. So, like, we all love the podcast. That's, hey, that's that's where we all got to know each other, you know. And that you can still find on the original Houseman XP YouTube site. Um, but if you uh, – it can be hard to find some of the uh, – you know, these YouTube videos with the, the cool content, visual content that we're trying to provide for you guys, it, it, it can be complicated to kind of sort through all that. So we, we made this other page um, just so that you can go there and everything you click on is going to be pretty cool to look at. Yep. So it's all shorts. It's thank you. Perfect. Yeah. It's all shorts. It's all, uh, it's action packed. It's if, uh, when you click on a hound hunting video and you just want to watch them tree game, you want to watch them catch game. You want to watch them run game down. That's what HXP TV is all about. Plus a little bit of backstory and commentary. So you know exactly what's happening. So you can learn and enjoy at the same time. So thanks guys. We hope to see you go check us out. HXP space TV. And, uh, you guys are going to see a lot of the content from the race that I was telling you about earlier. And, uh, thank you guys for joining us and we'll be all seeing you next month. Thanks, everyone. Later.